Hello friends, Vinyl Community, Wes here with a uh, another record update. I just uh, got back home from uh, Milwaukee uh, last night and uh, I just wanted to share with you some of the things I picked up while I was there. Um, I had a really cool uh, meeting with Rob Eolovox while I was there. Uh, he showed me around sort of where the where the good record stores were and that was that was awesome. It was certainly fun to meet uh, meet another VC member for the first time, and it, it was it was cool. That it was it was Rob because we've exchanged things in the past, so we kind of have a have a, already have a friendship going there. So that was cool. And it was just a really fun day. Uh, the day was really nasty, rainy, so it would have been nice to do like a sort of end of the day, here are our finds kind of thing, um, but just with the rain and everything I think Rob wanted to get back home as he had to get back to northern Illinois and so it didn't work out so we're gonna have to show our finds uh, on video here and um, so yeah Milwaukee is a uh, it's it's a cool town it's got it's a beer town and you know I, I love beer so that's that's always fun um, and some of my friends moved there a couple of years ago, so I uh, went, went to go see them since it's been a little over a year since I saw them, and um, it was a really great time. So with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and talk about the record stores in Milwaukee and my thoughts and uh, show you what I got. So the first one I went to was one I actually went to on Thursday when I got there, which is called uh, Rushmore Records. Um, and if you go back to one of Rob's older videos where he does a, uh, a Milwaukee uh, tour sort of thing, uh, you can see that store in the video. It is mostly CDs. They have sort of a small little corner of, of records in the back. Uh, not very many. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's maybe worth, it's not worth going out of your way to get there, but if you happen to be in the area, it wouldn't be, it would be worth your while to check in and just see, see what they got. Uh, it won't take you very long to go through everything they got, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, so that, that was Rushmore Records. I just sort of hit them because, because we were doing something in that area and I just popped in and, and checked it out. Um, so on Friday morning, I met up with Rob at the Exclusive Company. It was a, a very cool record store, reminding me a lot of uh, a store we used to have here in Gainesville called School Kids Records. Uh, it was, it's a very well-known uh, independent record store um, uh, that unfortunately closed in the late 90s, I believe, maybe early 2000s, somewhere in there. Um, just a really awesome, awesome record store. They had just they had everything. They had new stuff, used stuff, bargain bins, clothes, books. You know anything that sort of generally related to to music. It was there. It was well organized, well laid out, and, and that's the really the feeling I got from the exclusive company. They, you know, this, uh, seemed like the staff was was pretty knowledgeable. Uh, you know they're playing good music when we were in there. They weren't playing, uh, you know, some some Justin Bieber or something in there. So uh, very cool store. So let me go ahead and show you what I found at the. Uh, well, actually, before I show you what I found, let me go ahead and sh show you some of the video f that I shot in the exclusive company, so you can kind of get a feel for the store and uh, you'll see Rob in there uh, digging away. So uh, let's go see that, and we'll be right back.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those clips from the exclusive company. Uh, now let me go ahead and show you what I got. Uh, when I walked in, the first thing I saw, they had a, uh, they had sort of a, a little island of uh, bargain bin records. Well, bar not bargain bin records, but records that had been uh, on discounted for clearance purposes. Um, and the first thing I found there was the Dug Dugs. This is a, a group that I've heard uh, Fred, Big Star 1000, talk about a lot. Uh, he seems to really like them a lot. And it was $14.99 with 25% off, so it was about $11. So I figured I'd, you know, I'd give it a try. You know, it's it's a new reissue, still sealed. I figured I'd give it a try for 11 bucks. So that was the first thing I got. And... Then the next thing, I got a bunch of really cool records in their bargain bin. I, I really did enjoy, uh, they had a really good bargain bin, I thought. It was it was really nice to uh, to be able to dig through a bargain bin of, of some really good stuff and not have to, not have to sift through all the, the religious records and the, you know, the, what, you know, the stuff we all see, the, the first family records and all that kind of stuff that you usually have to dig through. Um, so the first thing I found was the soundtrack to Metropolis. And these were all 99 cents, by the way, in their, in their bargain bins, I think. Just cool. Um, I haven't seen this movie before, but the soundtrack looked cool. Uh, it has Freddie Mercury on here. It has uh, John Anderson, um, Adam Ant. And I think there's some, the, the actual score is done by, yeah, Giorgio Moroder does a score. So that that's really cool. So I was glad to find that. Next thing, you got a pretty nice copy of Elton John's Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dark Cowboy. Um, I mainly just bought this for the sleeve. I already had this album. And this one's actually missing the book. But this has a very nice sleeve on it. Definitely a uh, definitely worthwhile of being in my collection. I won't have to. I won't. I won't feel the need to replace this one, uh, whereas my other one has some ring wear on it and stuff. So, and the artwork on this is so amazing that you want a really nice copy of this. Next up, we have a Joan Baez album, just entitled Joan. Really nice. I'd actually uh, dug this out of their their main bins earlier, another copy of this, and it was two ninety nine. And then I was going through the bargain bins, and I found this one for ninety nine cents, and it was it was just as as clean as the other one. So I figured I pay three dollars when I can pay one dollar. So I got that. Next up, we got another one of these samplers. Uh, if you if you know if you're familiar with the if you've seen the uh, Sometimes on your inner sleeves, you'll see, you know, send send two dollars for these samplers, and uh, this is the one entitled Burbank. Sort of has that Chicago album cover look to it, the brushed metal sort of look to it. We got all kinds of different groups in here: Curved Air, Alice Cooper, Van Dyke Parks, Arlo Guthrie, John Cale. T-Rex, Foghat, Jimi Hendrix, Martin Mall, John Renborn, John Fahey. So, a lot of cool artists on here. You know, I, I kind of like collecting these 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 uh, compilations that that you see. Um, I always thought that was a cool thing that, you know, people could send away $2 and get these. Uh, okay, the next thing I got here, um, in the VC Swappery, Derek had sent me this and it got damaged in shipping and it was really awesome to be able to find this for a dollar. Uh, this is Steve Kahn's Tightrope. So I'm really excited to be able to hear this now. Um, so yeah, that was... That was great to find that. Next 
Next up, we got a copy of Elton John's self-titled. Uh, this is an Elton John I hadn't had before at all, period. So it was really nice to find this. This is a really nice copy. Next up, we have a Record Store Day sampler. This is from 2009, Record Store Day. Um, you got Las Vegas, Raphael Sadiq, MGMT, Franz Ferdinand, Black Kids, Living Things, Q-Tip, Tiempo Libre, Charles Mingus, Willie Nelson, and Cage the Elephant. So just a neat Record Store Day sampler. That was a neat find for a buck. Okay, next up we have a Carol King record. This is called Simple Things. Uh, one I hadn't seen before and it's it's still se still sealed, so it's it's really clean. Never been played, so it's going to be fun to it's fun to open this up and uh, play it for the first time. Really nice. I, I do like some of Carol King's stuff, so I hope, hope this is a good one. The artwork is, is definitely neat on it. I like it. And next we got another sealed record. This is Elton John's Jump Up. So this is one I do have, but uh, it would be nice to have a nice uh, minty sealed one. So that was a nice find. And the last thing I got from the exclusive company was this uh, Renaissance album, Novella. Don't have much Renaissance in my collection yet, but I'll pick it up in the bargain bin every time, probably. So, we'll give this a try, see, we'll see if it's any good. So that was the exclusive company spent been about two and a half three hours there and all I looked at was the record so you know it's it's a really good sized store uh, like I said really cool it's probably my favorite store of them all uh, just because it has everything there uh, you know both new and used and uh, you know all different formats and you know it's, it's just a cool store it had a really cool vibe so I, I really enjoyed that store a lot um, Next thing we went to went to lunch as it was already after one by then, so it was lunch time, and we went to Water Street Brewery and Rob treated me to lunch. Thanks again, Rob. That was awesome. Uh, had a had a, uh, a Chipotle, uh, no not a Chipotle, a uh, Southwest chicken wrap. It was really good. They had a uh, they had these sort of they were potato chips, but they were using sweet potatoes and regular potatoes, and they had something that was red. I don't know what those are. Uh, but it was really cool, and I had a you know their brewery, so I, I had to get the sampler. So I sampled all their all their beers. They had some really good beers, and um, I really enjoyed that. So moving on, after lunch, um, we went by a place my friends had found um, a, a couple months ago called Downtown Books, and. Uh, it's, a, it's a used bookstore, and they had they had a whole room of records, um, but unfortunately, their old store had to be closed. I guess the property was sold. They're building a, a, a hotel there now, so it's been torn down. But anyway, their old store was over 20,000 feet square feet, and their new store is only about 4,000 square feet. So most of their records are in storage now. They had a they had a a sort of one shelf of records. Um, I didn't find anything there. Rob found a couple there. Um, but it seemed like a neat place to go. Uh, definitely if you're, you're into used books, a very cool store to go to, uh, Downtown Books. And uh, they are trying to open a second location uh, nearby. Um, to where they can have more of the records and stuff out so that would be cool it, was, it sounded like they had a ton uh, you know from my friend what my friends were telling me and from what the uh, the guy at the shop there was telling us when we when rob and i were there so 
that'll be a place to maybe you know try try again in the future um, for now like I said what they have is pretty small but it was still a neat place to stop by definitely go by there if you're into used books uh, so after that uh, Rob took us to Bullseye Records that's his his favorite uh, record store in Milwaukee um, And uh, Bullseye Records is sort of a, a smaller store, uh, but really, really cool. Again, they have a really great selection of used vinyl. Um, a lot of stuff there that you won't see any, you know, won't normally see. A lot of the more ex obscure stuff is there. Um, really cool vibe. Really cool place. I really, I thoroughly enjoyed being there. Um, I did pick up a few things while I was there. Uh, the first thing I picked up was this reissue of Depeche Mode's A Broken Frame. Uh, this is something... I got, a, got an original of, of this from somebody recently, and it was one that had been in a flood, so the cover is, is damaged on it. So I really did like this album a lot. And I wanted. I it actually ended up keeping the one with the damaged cover, even though it's not really. It's not really nice to look at. I kept it anyway, just because I like the album. So I've been wanting to get this reissue. I know. Um, I know these reissues are pretty highly regarded. So they're you know they, they're, they're supposed to be. They're supposed to sound really good, and they're actually a gatefold that the, the originals aren't. So that's cool. So I got that Depeche Mode for of a broken frame. And the next thing we got was uh, the Thompson Twins in the Name of Love. This is from 1981. I believe this is their first album. So that was a, a very go a very cool find to uh, be able to add that to my to my Thompson Twins collection. I'm trying to trying to finish that out, and it's it's happening pretty fast now that uh, now that Mark sent me a bunch of those. So that was a really nice find. That was four bucks. And then the last thing I got while I was there was a really nice original copy of Roberta Flack's Killing Me Softly. Uh, this is a cover that normally gets pretty damaged. Um, it's got a nice... You can actually still read the title on the side there. Uh, it does have a little crease right up here, but that's not too bad. Uh, the reissue of this is pretty expensive. It's like 27, 28 bucks. So it was really nice to find this really clean original copy. So that was another four dollar find. That was a, very cool. So I was happy to find that. So after that, uh, we went sort of across the street to another record store called Off the Beaten Path. Um, and Off the Beaten Path. Uh, I guess you could say it would be my least favorite store of the of the of the trip. Um, they had a lot. It was all used stuff. Um, there was a lot of junk to dig through. It wasn't organized. From what I could tell, it wasn't organized at all. There was stuff was just ran completely random. Um, the prices were kind of high considering the condition of most stuff I looked at. But, you know, there's still a few gems to be pulled out of there, you know, anywhere. Uh, Rob, Rob bought a few. I ended up buying one thing here. But it is, it is basically across the street from Bullseye. So if you're going to Bullseye, you might as well, you know, drop in if you have a few minutes. Uh, but What I got is this uh, Broxy Music, the High Road EP. This was six bucks, and it looked, looked kind of interesting. Uh, there's a Neil Young cover on here, and a John Lennon cover, and then the you know two Brian Ferry songs. So I thought it was cool to, to add to my Roxy Music collection. You know, I've been I bought a few Roxy Music pieces in the past, and thought I would add one more to the collection. So those were my uh, those were my uh, vinyl finds from Milwaukee. Uh, I didn't want to you know 
I didn't want to buy a lot, and I didn't, so that was that was really good. I didn't, you know, it's, it's always trouble to try to get things home on a plane. Um, uh, a stack of records like that does fit nicely under the uh, under the seat of an airplane, so that was that was nice. I just shoved them under the seat in front of me. No, I didn't shove them. I placed them under the seat in front of me, um, and they fit just fine. So that was nice. I could carry them carry them home with me and, and make sure they didn't get damaged or anything, didn't get thrown around, and uh, it, it was a really good trip. And I. Thanks again, Rob, for showing me around and for lunch, and um, it was really great to finally meet you, and I, I definitely recommend others, if you have the chance, if you're traveling, um, seek out other VC members where you're traveling at, and see if, they, you know, see if they're willing to show you around, uh, you know, meet up with you, do some crate digging. It was a lot of fun, um, and yeah, I had, I had a great time, and... Uh, Thanks again, so we'll see you guys again real soon. Cheers.